Hello, my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then welcome to my channel and today's video is going to be my manga review for Demon Slayer by Koyoharu Gotoge. This is a video that has been coming for a very long time and today is finally the day because I have officially finished the Demon Slayer manga and now we are going to talk about it because I have so many thoughts. And right now this series has very much just kind of taken over my brain, so I will have the content warnings linked down below in the description along with links to some resources, and let's go ahead and get into it. Slayer follows our main character Tanjiro, whose peaceful life is shattered when his entire family is slaughtered by a demon. This is an attack who turns his little sister, who is really the only survivor, into a demon. So he sets out to try to turn his sister back to normal and also avenge his family. I have had quite the journey with this series that originally starts with the anime, and I feel like the easiest way for me to organize this review is to just start the same way that I organized my journal for this series. And that is by the anime and just kind of the way that they separate the arcs and the season slash movies. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about the beginning arcs, and this is just basically what season one of the anime covered. And honestly, I have been reading this series for a very long time now. It took me two years, I think, almost exactly. And it has been a while since I've read these volumes and chapters, but I do remember just feeling kind of underwhelmed by the beginning of the manga, and I do think that is because the anime is what it is, and I think I was just expecting more from it going into it. These are also just not my favorite arcs from the series, anime, or manga, even though I actually have grown more fond of them now that it's over. So in the beginning, I was just basically driven by my love for a lot of these characters and my desire to get to the content that I haven't read yet or seen yet from the series. And these arcs, they were a nice recap, it was nice to revisit these stories, but they were also just kind of there. And so we go on to Mugen Train, and this was an arc that I really loved in the anime. I cried, I thought about it for weeks afterwards, and it is the arc that really fully cemented my investment in this series and in these characters. Which on that note, I do feel like we are going to talk about my love for the Hashira quite a bit today. So I went into the Mugen Train arc with a certain expectation that I would feel those feelings and that emotional investment and attachment all over again. And I didn't at all, which is really unfortunate. And it was like that underwhelmed feeling that I had for the beginning arcs was back at like its fullest power and fullest version of itself. And honestly, I haven't really felt the same way about this arc since I read the manga, and it is a really important arc for this series. So I read the rest of this series without the attachment that I used to have, and even watched some of the later seasons of the anime without the attachment that I used to have, which led to me missing some of the emotions that I really needed to get the full impact of what they were doing, even though I recognized what they were doing. Which is such an unfortunate thing to have happen to what was your favorite arc at the time. So going into Entertainment District, I was super nervous. But honestly, I shouldn't have been. Something clicked here, I'm not sure what. But I enjoyed watching the season of the anime, and I think I enjoyed reading the arc just as much. Maybe even like a little bit more, honestly, because I got to control the pacing this time just through physically reading it. So I got to go through some of the things that I thought dragged a little bit a little bit faster. Which was super nice and will be a reoccurring theme throughout this video, but I really like this arc. It is one of my favorites when I wasn't really expecting it to be, but it is not the top favorite. We'll get to that one later. So I actually took a little bit of a break from the manga in between finishing Entertainment District and reading the rest of the series, and at that time I watched and did not really enjoy the Swordsmith Village arc or the Hashira training arc in the anime. So yeah, I was not really looking forward to reading them, but then I did get into a mood for this series again, and I picked the manga back up, and I just really wanted to get to Infinity Castle. That was the main goal. So I basically didn't stop reading until it was over. But I am happy to say that Swordsmith Village did go a lot better for me in the manga than it did the anime. And it's like some of the things that didn't work for me in the anime, I liked a lot better in here. And reading this arc was what fully cemented Kanroji for me. It's just like one of my top favorite characters from this series. Which we were getting there just based off of the anime anyway. But yeah, this did it for sure. And I do think that I like this arc a lot better because again, I got to control the pacing of it. And even though I say that I did like this arc a lot better in the manga, the fights did still drag a little bit long for me. I still didn't really like the villains that we were fighting. It still kind of felt like we were repeating some of the same things that we did in Entertainment District arc, but it was better and it probably helped that I was just in the mood for this series and I was just able to have fun with this arc and be back with the characters. There was also an emotional moment towards the end of this arc in the anime that I didn't really love that I thought the manga handled a lot better. And yeah, the manga just kind of saved my relationship with this arc for sure. And it also 
also did save my relationship with the Hashira training arc, thankfully. Because this was an arc that from the beginning of this series, I was so excited to get to. Just because of the title of the arc, and like I said earlier, I really do love the Hashira. But this season of the anime just did not work for me, and while I did really love seeing the characters, it felt like we were wasting a lot of time. But I also didn't realize just how much they added to the anime that wasn't in the manga. But this just flowed for me so much better, and it was like what I wanted from the anime. And that's not to say that this arc didn't have its moments for me in the anime, because it definitely did, but they were also just as good in here. But yeah, I definitely had a lot of fun reading this. It was very short and very quick, but I was still very much ready at this point to just get to the Infinity Castle. And then I realized very quickly that I was not ready for the Infinity Castle, like, at all. I got spoiled very early on in my Demon Slayer watching journey about something that happens in this arc, but even with that warning, I was still not okay, and I still spent like three volumes just shaking and sobbing. But hey, they pulled that emotion out of me, and that's ultimately a good thing. The fights were also really good. I was on the edge of my seat for so many of them the entire time. I cannot wait to see them animated. And it was also just really nice to feel like we had the whole cast here and contributing to the overall storyline in one way or the other. And this is their big final arc, and it felt like everyone really got a chance to shine, and I love that. And I was already feeling super attached to a lot of these characters, and this cemented a lot of things for me in terms of the characters and also a romance that I really love. And the situation that I described before was not the only time that I cried during this arc. I don't know, I feel like this series made a lot of really smart choices in this arc, and I really enjoyed just like the strategy of it all and just seeing like even the little things finally come together, but a lot of things were really coming together. Which is good because it is the ending, and I will say for the ending and for like the final battle, it was going really good, but then we kind of took a turn towards the very end that just kind of felt a little bit dumb to look at. And then we kind of just extended the arc a little bit more, which at the end of the day, I don't really mind, but it did just kind of feel like we were filling time. I also really did not like one of the final chapters at all. But like, I also cried at the end because I was feeling sentimental about this being the end. And I do really feel like they made me feel the passage of time very successfully, which I didn't like, both because I didn't like it, but also because I was feeling sentimental. But yeah, Infinity Castle, by far my favorite arc of the series, and it's really the first time that I really loved and was attached to specifically the storyline. And I wasn't just getting carried by a majority of the characters, which, yeah, Let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper into them next and just kind of give some overall thoughts. And let's go ahead and start with Tanjiro. He's actually one of my favorite Shonen Jump protagonists. I don't know, he's just polite and sweet and he makes me smile out of pure wholesomeness, which makes him really easy to like and to root for. As for Nezuko, I really like her. I do wish that I got to see a little bit more of her, especially towards the end. As for Zenitsu, he's loud, he's annoying, and just kind of awful at times. And I don't know, I just don't really like that I've had to accept him as part of this series, but he is and he's there. As for Inozuke, also very loud, very obnoxious, but more in a fun way for me. And he's also a character that really grew on me as the series went on. Giyu, I really like him, always have. He's one of my favorite Hashira. And the Hashira are really just my overall favorites. And speaking of overall favorites, Shinobu. When I first started this series, I didn't really get into the show until she showed up. And by that extension, I also do really love Kanao. And I already mentioned Kanroji, but by that extension, I also really do like Iguro. And yeah, if it's not obvious, shout out to all of the Hashira, honestly. I still remember when I first saw them all together in the anime. They're what kept me reading and watching the series in the first place. As for the villains, we have a lot of them. Again, the only time I really feel like the villains actively brought me in the series down was Swordsmith Village. And while I do like getting the backstories of the villains, especially in Infinity Castle, some of them definitely did drag on more than others. And that's mostly just because it did feel really formulaic at a certain point. As for Muzan, he's our big villain, and he actually kind of got worse for me as the series kept going. Like, I started out interested in him and liking having him as our villain, and hating him and reacting to him in the same way that I should be reacting to a villain. But yeah, as the series went on and we got to know him and his motivations better, I, it was fine. I think I just wanted something a little bit more, maybe something a little more complex, maybe a little bit stronger. But again, there are so many other characters that I really love and that I could focus on instead, so it didn't really matter too much. And I do 
really feel like this series does a really good job at letting you get to know all of the characters, and they do have a lot of characters. And I do feel like this is so important for my overall relationship with this series because, again, they are what kept me watching and reading. And the characters are the reason that this series took over my brain in the first place and why I still think about them a lot. As for some other things, I really did like the art style. I do prefer the action scenes in the anime. They were just a little bit harder for me to follow in the manga. I also did really like a lot of the comedy. Not all of it, but a lot of it. I do think the series has a really nice charm to it. And again, a lot of that is the characters and their personalities and just relationships and dynamics with one another. And there are just a lot of really amazing relationships that have developed in this series. And you can really tell just how much that they care about one another. And even though I didn't love everything about this series, I can say that I left this series with a really nice love for it overall, which I don't think I could say that before reading the manga, and maybe I would have gotten here anyway just through the anime alone. But based on how I feel about some of the choices that this series made towards like the very end of the series, I honestly don't know. And I feel like I spent a lot of time wondering whether I should repass the anime, but I am very much glad that I did. And I ended up giving the Demon Slayer manga four out of five stars. Hey, so that is all that I have for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and answer the question that'll be around here if you want to do that. And hopefully I will see you here next time. Bye.